Greetings again in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank God for the time. Uh, life is not a joke and we mustn't take life for granted. The time God has given us, we cherish it and we are grateful and we appreciate the life that God has given us. So today I want to look at an issue which has caused a lot of controversy. Churches have been formed, schools have been started, books have been written, all in the name of healing, all in the name of sickness, disease and infirmity. So today I want to look at a very, 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 very crucial subject, the subject of healing, the subject of sickness, the subject of disease, the subject of infirmity. What do I mean by this? When you look at what is happening today, there are literary organizations which have started based on healing. There are organizations which have started based on promising people healing. But tonight, I want us to look at what the scriptures say. I want us to look at what the Bible says. Because when you talk of healing today, there are so many people who are in churches. There are so many people who are in organizations. As I have said, there are so many people who are buying books on healing, but all the same, they are still sick. Is God a liar? Does God still heal people? Yes, God is a healer. But what is it which the Bible teaches about healing. So tonight, I want us to look at the scriptures and I want us to explore what the Bible teaches on healing, not what the pastor says, not what the prophet says, not what the archbishop says, not what the deacon says. We want to look at what the Bible teaches. I am sure you will all agree with me that when we are talking of healing, there is one definite verse which comes in your mind, in my mind, and that comes from the book of Isaiah chapter 53. By his stripes, we are healed. What is the meaning of that verse? So I want to explain something about Isaiah 53 before I even go on to reading the chapter. I want you to know that Isaiah chapter 53 has nothing to do with physical healing. So now, I will show you what it is talking about. So it does not matter what your pastor has taught you. It does not matter what the archbishop has taught you. It does not matter what you have learned. Today, I want you to throw all things out of your mind. And let us look at what the scriptures say. So what I will do tonight, I will go to the book of Isaiah chapter 53. And then I will want you to underscore verses 6. But I will try to read all the 6 verses and explain the meaning of Isaiah chapter 53 verses 6. Let's go. Isaiah 53. Okay. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a, dry, uh, out of a dry ground, he has no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, 
and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. And with his stripes we are healed. When we look at Isaiah 53, I want you to look at something which I'm going to introduce to you. The word context. There are some people who are going to say, I said God does not heal people today. That's not what I said. There are some people who are going to say, when we pray for the sick, you, do you mean to tell me that the sick will not crack, recover? That is not what I said. I said, Isaiah 53 does not teach about divine physical healing. And then you will go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 and say, ah, oh, there is a verse which also talks of that thing, of, 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 the, of the same context. I will touch that verse. But I want us to look at something today in the whole book of Isaiah chapter 53. You see, there is something, as I've, men I've mentioned, which is called context. You see, when you take a text out of context, you have a pretext. Meaning that when you take a statement from the scriptures and you don't take it in its right context you don't have the true meaning of the text so now as you can see when you do a careful study of the book of isaiah 53 you will discover that the book of isaiah 53 has got 12 verses and none of the verses talk of sickness or disease or infirmity but what is the theme of Isaiah 53? There are three words which sum up Isaiah 53. One of them is transgression. One of them is sin. One of them is iniquity. So when you look at these three words, they are thematic of the chapter 53 of Isaiah. So now, for us to understand the meaning of Isaiah chapter 53, Broadly, we have to study the whole book of Isaiah. This is what I'm going to do. But this series, I'll, uh, or this segment, I'll call it part one. I'll just try to touch the peripheries of Isaiah chapter 53 in connection with the theme of the whole book of Isaiah. So let us go to the first chapter of Isaiah chapter of, of, of Isaiah 1 so that we see who the book is being written to so that we understand what is happening in Isaiah 53 so Isaiah chapter 1, let's go there I will read the 6 verses again Isaiah chapter 1 the vision of Isaiah the son of Amos which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So here there are two kingdoms which the book of Isaiah is addressing. So everything which is happening within the book of Isaiah is written in the context of the kingdoms of, Jer of Judah and Jerusalem. These were the two tribes from which the children of, 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 of Israel are derived from. We know Reuben, we know Simeon, we know Levi, we know Judah, we know Joseph, we know Benjamin, we know Issachar, we know all the 12 guys. So those guys at the end, they ended up producing two tribes. Their children's children or the, the progenitors of these 12 people produced two kingdoms, Judah and Jerusalem. So now, the book of Isaiah is addressed to these two tribes. What is the address? Verse 2. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. 
I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. A crib is a cottage, or a manger, or a sty, a place where you can contain an animal. So, he is saying, an ox knows his master, an ass his master's crib. Meaning that even animals have identity, they know who owns them. This is the complaint of God about Isaiah, about, to Isaiah about the tribes of Israel and Judah. So now I want to show you something that this book is written in connection with sin, iniquity, and transgression. Verse 4. O sinful nation, Judah and Jerusalem, a people law laden with iniquity, a seed of evil doers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel to anger, they are gone away backward. Verse 5 Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. So, chapter 1, verses 5, is introducing a sickness which is afflicting the two tribes, Judah and Jerusalem. What is the sickness? We find it in verse 6. I'll read. Why should you be stricken and, uh, okay, verse 6, from the soul of the, of the foot even to the head, there is no sound, soundness in it, but wounds and it bruises and pu putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither modified with ointment. What do we see here? We see two nations which are sick. What are they suffering from? They are suffering from sickness. What is the sickness? The sickness is called sin. So the book of Isaiah was written to express or to show the sins of the children of God. So he says the whole head is sick from the head to the toes. The, the whole body is sick. You need healing. This is the same healing we find in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. So now when I come to you and tell you that Isaiah 53 has nothing to do with physical healing, I am talking about spiritual healing. Here is the case. Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18, 19, 20. God says, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as, as, as what as what. Let me read the scripture so that I don't misquote it. So that you get exactly what I'm saying. I know that it's, it's going to be very, very clear for us. He says, now come, let us reason together. Says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, crimson, they shall be as wool. What do we see? An open invitation by God to Israel to come for salvation. An open invitation to Israel by God to come for salvation. Now, when you continue reading the book of Isaiah to the 66 chapters, you will see that nowhere is it talking about physical healing. Do you know there is a verse which says, it's, I think it's Second Corinth, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14, which says, If my people, which are called by my name, if they shall humble themselves and turn away from their, their wicked ways and seek for my face, then will I hear from heaven 
and I will heal their land. What type of a land needs healing from God? It's a land which is sick. What type of disease are we talking about? We are talking of a disease called sickness. So now Isaiah 53 verses 6 is talking about sin. We saw where it says, Who has believed our report? To whom the arm of the Lord is revealed. For he shall grow up before him like a tender plant and like a root out of a dry ground. And then it talks of iniquity, it talks of transgression, and it talks of sin. No way does it talk of sickness and disease. So now, I want to show you something that this verse has got a cousin verse or a twin verse. And that twin verse is First Peter chapter 2 verses 24. So now, I want you to see that even First Peter chapter 2 verses 24 or verse 24 is not talking about sickness or disease or infirmity as in headache or cancer or, or stroke or any physical ailment. It's talking about sin. Let's go to Peter and see what he's talking, he's talking about. First Peter chapter 2 verses 21. I will begin reading from there. First Peter chapter 2. I'll read verse 21. It goes like this. For even here unto were you called. Because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example that you should follow in his footsteps. What did Christ do? Christ suffered for you and me. Leaving us an example that we must follow in his footsteps. Verses 22. Who did no sin? Neither was guile found in his mouth. He doesn't say who did not have disease and sickness in his body. No. Listen to the context. You see, we compare scripture to scripture to understand what the Bible is talking about. You don't run away with one verse and not understand the meaning of the verse on its own. You have to... You see, in the Bible... There is no important doctrine which only runs away with one verse. So I have shown you that in Isaiah chapter 53, we see that the theme is iniquity, transgression, and sin. And here, where we are reading, we are seeing some, uh, say the same pattern that Christ left us an example that we should follow in his footsteps. What is the example? He did not do any sin. Let's go and continue reading. I wrote some notes. Let me just try to read some notes I wrote when I was writing about this. I just want to show you something so that you understand. I wrote the, I just wrote the verse, but I wrote notes with my own letter. Look at this. This verse, Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions is a partner to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21, 22, 23, 24. And then the verses which I underlined, I underlined verses 23. It says, Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body. On the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live to righteousness. By whose stripes you were healed. Reference Isaiah 53 verse 6. Reference Isaiah 53, the old book. Sin 
iniquity and transgression. Now, here is an interesting case. Are you saying Jesus Christ does not heal people? That's not what I am saying. I am saying 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24-25 is not talking of physical healing. I am saying 1 Peter chapter uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6 is not talking about divine healing physically. It's talking about spiritual healing. I have shown you that in Isaiah chapter 1, where we start to see the introduction of the book of Isaiah, the whole of Israel is sick and they are suffering from a disease called sin. So the healing they are looking for is the healing of sin. Jesus, that's why you see that when you read the scriptures or you read the Bible, you will not see one verse which says, Jesus Christ carried our diseases on the cross. There is no such a verse. Now, there are people who will say, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 to 15, I suppose, the Bible says, and they brought all who were sick, and Jesus Christ healed all of the people who were sick. Those with cancer, he healed them in Matthew. Those who were blind, he healed them. Those who were who, who had fevers, he healed them. Or the lepers, he healed them. And then he says, so that it will be fulfilled, that which was written in Isaiah. So now look at this. When this verse in Matthew 8 was written, or when Jesus healed the people, he had not yet died on the cross. So the, the dying of the, the stripes were not yet applied. When you look at when he died, you will see that three years after Matthew 8, verses 11 to 15, after he had healed people from there, that's when he died after three years, showing that it was not about stripes, we should heal people physically. Stripes are for the forgiveness of sins. Now, I want to ask you a question. Answer me from the scriptures. Because I will ask the question and I will answer it. And then I will invite you to read the scriptures. Romans chapter 8. You see, there are people who even go on to teach that a Christian must not get sick. You mustn't confess negative. You mustn't confess sickness. The time you confess that you are sick, you become sick. There is no such a thing. That is what is called metaphysics. Eastern, Eastern mystique religion where people in Asia and you know the people who are believing in Buddha and all these Kundulani spirits used to teach such things. They are not found in the scriptures. Romans chapter 8. I want to show you something that every man as I am talking, you are sick right now. I am sick right now. As all, every, as long as you are on earth, it doesn't matter who you are. You are sick and I will show you from the scriptures. Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Verse 22, it says, For we know that the whole world, or the whole creation, groans and travails in pain together until now. Every human being, animal, mammal, organism, is crying right now. Romans 8.22, verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Who are the people with the first fruits of the Spirit? Christians. This is Paul writing about himself. as Not only they, the people of the world and the, the whole world, but even us Christians, we are traveling. With what? Listen. And not only they, verse 23, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, 
the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what is what a man sees, what does he yet hope for? So do you see that we are not yet redeemed our bodies? First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52 shows how we are going to be redeemed in death. That this body which rots is going to what? To die. And then another body is going to come up which is redeemed, not this one. So Jesus Christ did not die for the physical for the physical diseases to be healed. That's why you see that when you read in James chapter 5, verses 11, the Bible says, Is anyone among you sick? What they must they do? Let them call for the elders. And the elders will lay their hands. And then it goes on to say, If they have sinned, they must confess. So why must elders be called when instead they have healed us? You see that there is something now not not stress here. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call for the elders. And let these elders what, pray for them. Okay, let me just read the scripture as it is. So that it doesn't come from my hand. From my, James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse 11. Okay, John chapter 5, verse, is, it's verse 14, sorry. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Is any sick among you, let them confess Isaiah 53, verse 6. Does it say that? No. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call someone for the elders, anointing them with oil. And the, the, it goes on to say the prayer of faith by an elder will what? Will save the sick. So do you see that we are not healed by Isaiah 53 verse 6 physically? Isaiah 56 verse 6, uh, Isaiah 53 verse 6 is talking about sin, about disease, about infirmity, which is introduced in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 6, where the Bible says the whole nation is sick. I have shown you 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14, which says, If my people, which are called by my name, if they must humble them, if they shall humble themselves, and turn away from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their iniquities and heal the land. So there is a healing which is needed for a nation. And this is the healing of what? Of sin. Exod uh, uh, Revelation 22 verse 2. I want to show you something. Let's look at the scriptures. Not what our pastors teach us. Because our pastors have deceived us long enough. Okay. Revelation 22, verses 2. In the middle of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, twelve tribes of Israel. And he did her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Are we saying the nations are suffering from headache? Are we saying the nations are suffering from Ebola? Are we saying the nations are suffering from this virus? There's this new virus. What is it called? 
this new virus which is afflicting people, no virus. Are we saying that? Are we saying the nations are suffering from HIV? All of them. Are we saying the nations are limping or they've got they, they, they've got asthma? No. Revelation 22 verse 2 is talking of the leaves of a tree being for the healing of the nations. What do leaves represent? They represent the shame of sin. You remember Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden when they, have, when they had sinned, what did they do? The Bible says they covered themselves with the leaves. So when the Bible is talking of leaves, it's talking of sin. And then here we see that there are leaves which heal nations. And there's a tree. And that tree is in the middle of the garden. So the leaves which are being spoken of here, they are for salvation. I am the true vine. That's Jesus. So do we see now that when we talk about healing, there are two dimensions. There are two spheres. Spiritual and physical. Now I want to address another issue which we see today. We are told that don't confess sickness and disease. Don't confess that you are sick. I want to show you something. There is a man called Apostle Paul. He says to Timothy in verse in first Timothy chapter 5, verses 23, no longer take water for your often infirmities, but take a little bit of wine for your what? For your often infirmities. What was Paul saying to Timothy? Was he saying, don't confess that you are not sick? Why did not Paul say to Timothy, Timothy, by his tribes you were healed, so you are not sick. But what does he say? He says, for your often infirmities, no longer take water, but take wine. Timothy was a pastor in Ephesus, and history has it that he was suffering from ulcers. No way do we read of Paul saying to him, you are healed. You are healed. You are healed by his stripes. Don't confess sickness. Don't confess negative. You are healed. He didn't say that. Why? Because Pentecostal pastors, 99.5.00% of pastors, 99% of pastors are teaching people lies. And the people of God can't read the Bible for themselves to say that what we are being taught is a lie. Do you know something? When you look at what is happening in the world today, people are sick. There are people who are in churches for more than 30 years and they were told that they are healed, but they are not healed. They are believe, believe, believe. When God heals you, you are truly healed. It's not like, ah, by faith or by this. If God heals you and you are blind, your eyes start seeing. It's not that, ah, no, you are healed by faith. There is no such a thing. So what am I trying to show you? I'm just trying to show you that we missed it big time, Christians. And it's time we must repent and go to the scriptures and divide the word of God properly. I have shown you that Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, was having answers. Even Paul himself was sick. Do you know what he says? In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9, he says, A messenger of Satan was sent to buffet me in my body. And I prayed to God three times to take it away. And God said, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul was sick. Evidence, Galatians 4, verse 11. I'll show you that Paul was sick. Physical. He had an infirmity in his body. Galatians, Galatians chapter 4, verses 11, I'll read. Okay, verses 13, sorry. Galatians chapter 4, verse 13. 
You know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel to you at the first. And my temptation which was in my flesh you despised not nor rejected but received me as an angel of God even as Christ Jesus. Uh, there's a verse where he goes on to say you were even willing to pluck your eyes and give me. Okay, it's verse 15. Where is then the blessedness you spoke of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. What is Paul talking about to the Galatians? He says, you know Galatians, that when I came to you, it was because of a sickness or a disease or an infirmity. Why did Paul not say, Isaiah 53 verse 6, by his tribes, you know Galatians, I was healed. Do you see that the word of God exposes us, pastors? Because of the lies we tell people of God. So he goes on to say in verse 15, you are even willing to pluck out your eyes and give them to me. Meaning that Paul had a problem with his eyes. That's Paul for you of the Bible. Yes, Paul had problems with his eyes. That's why you see that when he writes to the Ephesians, when he writes to the Corinthians or to the Galatians, he says, see, that me, Paul, have written this letter to you with my big letters. So in other words, when Paul was writing a letter, he used big words because his sight was bad. He had what is called AIDS. Read somewhere. There was a, a town where they wanted to kill him. I'm forgetting the name of the town. And then the Bible says, and then Paul's AIDS, they took him safely out. So Paul had people who were guiding him because physically he had a problem. That's why he went to the book, to the Galatians. This is not in the Bible. But let me tell you something about the history of Galatia. In the book of Galatians, we see that there is something which is, at Galatia, there's, that's one of the places in, 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 in ancient, in ancient Israel, in, ancient, in, in, in the ancient days of the, of the Bible, where there was a university. So there was something which was called I salvo. I salvo was a product which was used to treat eyes. So historians, not that I'm saying it's in the Bible, I'm just giving you history, which you can you can research on. It says when he was going to Galatia, he was going to look for I salvo to have his eyes treated because he had bad sight. That's Paul of the Bible. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 20. Paul leaves a brother called Trifomus sick. Why? Brothers and sisters in the Bible, they got sick. In the New Testament, when a pastor comes to you and says you are not supposed to be sick, confess healing, confess this, buy this book about healing, tell them that's not what the Bible teaches. Thank you.